Charlotte, North Carolina, the city often known for banking, trade, education, and entertainment. In Charlotte, as in many other cities, progress is often measured by the numbers. But as you're about to see, progress is also measured by the beauty and meaning of art. Many sculptures have been created and installed all around the Queen City. Although thousands of people pass by them every day, few understand the incredible amount of time, energy, and patience involved in the creation of these works of art. Join us on the campus of Central Piedmont Community College with instructor Ashley Knight as we follow the creation of two three-dimensional sculptures. Hello, my name is Ashley Knight and I teach and direct the sculpture area here at Central Piedmont Community College. The projects for my sculpture classes are pretty spectacular actually. I spend a lot of time uh, I change, just changing them up and seeing what works to get the student to think about uh, you know, both representational and conceptual ideas and, and how to put those into a visual language in three dimensions. When we were initially uh, talking about the sculpture relief projects for the campus. Um, we were sort of passing around ideas and thinking about, uh, there was a whole list of academic programs that we wanted to represent. Um, I, th I thought I would take something, uh, like dental health was really interesting to me because you know people always have sort of negative connotations when they think about going to the dentist and you know, sitting there in a chair and opening their mouth open, getting it stretched open and dental work is not really exciting so I kind of want to take something like that and, and make it interesting and make it a little more exciting and kind of jazz it up and do something crazy with scale and make it a little more light humored I guess and interesting in that kind of way. And so I kind of jumped at dental because of that reason. The viewer's perspective is, um, well, the dental composition is such that, <clears throat> you know, you're, it's really, you're really kind of wide open, your mouth is wide open, and it's a really tight space that, <clears throat> you know, the dental hygienist and doctors are working in. So we wanted to take that small area and just blow it up, make, explode it. <clears throat> so the view actually is, um, you, the viewer, are sort of way back in the back of the mouth, like seated on the tonsils perhaps, <clears throat> and looking out through, through, through the teeth, through the, looking out through the mouth, and uh, seeing the dental hygienist putting the mirror tool in and looking around and seeing what everything looks like inside the mouth and everything. The motorsport I thought would be a really exciting, really exciting uh, <clears throat> idea to represent or program to represent. Um, so you got fast cars, you know, racing is a really interesting and sexy idea. Machinery, I'm into ma machinery and, and materials and metal anyway, so that, that was just a natural sort of a response. That was the first one I actually picked up. I was like, oh, I want to do motorsport. Yeah. So I'm not a huge racing fan per se, but just the fabrication that goes into it and I just love working with metal, and that's just a really, I don't know, sexy is a good word, I guess. Sexy thing to do. <laughs> um, the motorsport composition is both representational and abstract at the same time in different areas. And that one is sort of, well, the tentative title is You in the Driver's Seat. So to get you excited about motorsport, you, you the viewer, are looking you're inside the car, so another view, perspective from inside out. You're inside the car looking out through the, the windshield, so you're right in front of this huge, this giant dashboard that, that spans, you know, six to seven feet wide with a steering wheel that has a three and a half foot diameter and huge gauges, and then there's the, the rails of the car that go up, and you're looking out through the focal point, which is just above the dashboard, I had three figures working, so just to 
sort of illustrate the idea of uh, the instructor and some students that are actually working on fabricating fabricating this uh, this race car. So they're actually in, in action shot of welding, they're welding on the hood. And so it's something that would actually be done per se at the automotive shop, but it's an illustration of what the kind of work they do there. Because working with uh, English wheels and metal fabrication equipment to sort of form the bodies and you know the sheet metal fabrication and the welding all takes goes into effect. I'm really enthusiastic and passionate about what I do and the creative process and I want that to translate to my students. So when I go in and tell them about a project, I want them to be, I want them to sort of feel my energy and go into it completely engaged in the creative process and experimentation. Um, you know, I just, I want them to focus and work. You know, I don't require that they, they are, uh, you know, master draftsmen or can paint really, really well, or if they've had too much creative experience in the past, I want them to come in and sort of be playful and work through the possibilities of what they can create. And then it's usually and often along the way that they discover what they can do and they're amazed by what they can do once they kind of loosen up the normal everyday constraints of things. You know, so being the traits of creativity is one is being playful and you know, relaxing and being fluent and, and being receptive to ideas and then sort of implementing them and playing with them and manipulating them and something great usually comes out of that once they organize it and analyze it and go through that process. Okay, so this is how the project evolved to become what it is today. Um, first, we sort of looked at images and everybody came in with, you know, a lot of images and the way they might combine things. A lot of them were really exciting and lend themselves really well to paintings and drawings and that kind of thing. But in sculpture, you have to simplify and focus in on something in particular, <clears throat> otherwise it'll be just too busy. But um, sort of the process is collecting all everyone's thoughts and images for things, coming up with a, coming up with a composition, and then translating that composition into sort of a clay model. So we did a clay relief sculpture that would represent what the final sculpture would look like. Um, and that clay model was, you know, pretty small. It was, you know, anywhere from nine inches by 12 inches or a little larger. So we created the, the clay model and then later 
we then started measuring and scaling up to what the size was gonna be in the end, which is six feet by eight feet for the dental and seven feet by eight feet for the motorsport composition. Um, then we could start making large paper and cardboard pieces and lay them out on the floor, how they would actually look. And this kind of informed us also how we could cut the metal and shape the metal and work in efficient ways within the creative process to create the final sculpture. So the full size paper or cardboard maquette then we could go in and we have our dimensions, we could go in and start measuring and cutting the steel and welding and grinding and all that. Well, in a lot of cases we, we have sort of the, the paper forms uh, lined up and laid out and then we'll go and actually redraw some of them on large sheet metal. Uh, the sheet metal is actually uh, is 22 gauge, so it's pretty thin, pretty thin material to work with. Um, so we can lay it out, and then we can cut it with shears, um, little rotary tool saws, and uh, torches we can use for thicker metal, and plasma cutter, we can use the plasma cutter to cut things too. But we uh, cut the shapes out, and if they're straight, straight pieces, then we can put them together and weld them with a MIG welding machine, which is a wire feed welder. And if they're more curvilinear, planar pieces, we can take them to an English wheel and sort of roll them and shape them as we see fit as far as what's going to lend itself well to the form. Okay, so basically what we're doing here is we're taking five separate classes and condensing them down into one, which is also compressed in time as it's a summer session. So we have three class days a week, but we're actually working five days a week. Um, classes are officially over at this point, so we're continuing to work on the project. We have a handful of students. We have uh, five students here uh, currently working on this project. Basically, this is a sculpture class, but we're also doing what the motorsport program offers in four consecutive classes based on constructing the race car from ground up. Um, how to weld uh, tubing, how to shape tubing and weld it together using the, the MIG welding machine, the TIG welding machine, oxycetylene torches and that kind of thing. Um, so sheet metal fabrication, four different level courses you have to take consecutively. We're taking those skills because we, we come in with students who have very little knowledge or skills pertaining to metalworking. We're taking that skill level all the way up to creating an actual public art project, which is hugely significant. So through demonstrating the equipment and continue to practice and work on the equipment through trial and error, we learn how to shape it to what, what we really want to see in, in the final form. So through trial and error and practice, we are able to come up with the, the forms and the designs that we want to have. Um, so basically we're taking five classes, condensing them down into one um, in summary. Okay, so uh, basically you take this thing that stretches the metal. Um, it's like this little press stretches it. So I made this round um, ring basically and um, you know tack that together and now I'm just raising it up by um, like putting a lip on it so we can make the uh, little gauge uh, protrude a little bit from the surface of the dash. Um, basically I'm just you know wrapping a strip of metal around it and tacking it right on the edge so gotta just make sure you get it right on the edge and not burn through. Um, I've only been welding for like two weeks so it's kind of 
kind of big for me, you know? But uh, yeah, it's really bright, so don't try this at home. Dalton here is fabricated in almost this entire steering wheel, with the exception of this little curve. But and the detail work it takes really precision uh, work and skill. Are the the gauge lip covers to go around? Basically, we're using uh, uh, descending hexagonal cylinders for the gauges because all along we've. We're basically thinking about how light's going to play on the actual sculpture relief. So we have a, a theme of uh, using, well, looking back at our perspective, the inside looking out of the dental mouth and from inside out on the uh, motorsport relief. We've been thinking about perspective and issues of perspective and scale exaggeration. Uh, so basically we've kind of looked back into the history of art and thinking about Picasso in the way uh, multiple views and perspectives are used in the history of art and how we can incorporate a play with light with multiple perspectives. Um, we've gone from using a lot of geometry and then a lot of curvilinear uh, forms here. So I've done a lot of the ge geometric forms and Dalton has fabricated a lot of the curvilinear forms. For the, for the painting of the sculptures, we used um, regular traditional auto body, automotive style paint, which is an acrylic urethane type paint. And there's lots of stages in the process. So what, what we went in and did, um, well, everything's put together, then we, everything's welded and grinded back perfectly. Um, we have to go in and re-clean the metal with a solvent, you know, acetone or, 
some denatured alcohol, something to get make sure every little bit of oil and grease is off of the sculpture. And then we have to spray it with a, actually before that even, we go in and fill seam lines in some cases and do some more modeling because when I'm, when I'm thinking about, when I'm thinking back, when I'm working on the metal, I'm thinking back also to that clay model and support, part of the aesthetic is having sort of a, that kind of a pushed clay look and an interplay between that pushed clay look and the rigidness of metal at the same time. So we used a Bondo or body filler, um, which is a resin, to go in and fill in some seam lines um, that we didn't want to show. And then we also modeled areas that we did want to show to give more texture and play with light in interesting ways. <clears throat> so some areas would be smoother and some areas would be rougher and more textural to play with light. And after the bondo is done, we have to sand back the bondo, and that's, <clears throat> if you've ever sanded bondo, you know that it takes a long time to do, and it's a really involved process, um, especially on a sculpture of this size, too. It's not just like uh, doing a car door and just be able to take it back to the, the metal when you have all these curvilinear pieces and project projections from a background in relief. It takes a lot more time. <clears throat> but after that, we spray a metal etch primer over the entire sculpture, front side and back side, every little, you know, crease and crevice. What that does is it bites into the metal and gives it a, a thicker surface to actually uh, grab onto the next layer of primer, which is the primer that's specifically designed for the paint. Um, this base coat primer is then sprayed over the metal etch primer. Uh, two to three coats. I think in some cases we use three coats. And then this primer is not ready for paint to be applied to it. It has to be in and of itself uh, sanded back down to be able to accept the paint and hold it. So we take a really high grit sandpaper, uh, 600 to, to 1000 grit sandpaper, and we have to touch every area of the sculpture and scuff it to make sure it's going to hold the paint on. So after that's done, that's cleaned off again, um, you know, air hosed off and then wiped, wet wiped. Then we prepare the paint, we spray over uh, the flat areas first and the curvilinear areas. Um, in some cases we went about three to five coats. On traditional car applications you do about three coats. Um, and then a drop coat which is a little bit heavier spray at the end to make sure everything's evened out. Well, the trick is to get all the, uh, the planes and the way they pro project, you have to stay a certain distance from every area to get it all right. And that's, that's a, one of the challenging things as far as the painting goes. So after that happens, then there's, um, then we seal it with the, <clears throat> the gloss protective coat, which gives it that really, really nice, uh, uh, bright, glossy, reflective, wet look. So it really reflects light at this point. And, plays with it and bounces it around and makes it just really completely pop out. It's the final process in it, just spraying the clear coat over that. The dental health composition will likely be placed in the, the, the uh, dental health building over here on the central campus. And the uh, motorsport composition um, will most likely go either at the motorsport facility at North or one of the other automotive centers. I think Hendrix Automotive Center at Levine was um, mentioned or heard about at one time. So pretty much decided what is the, the best location to get the, the most viewers and you know, engagement with the, with the public as possible. What I want the students to come away with when they, when they take sculpture is I want them to come away, you know, by the end of the course, discovering, I want them to see what the possibilities are of, what, of when they really open up to being creative, what they can make, what they can communicate visually. Um, that's one thing. And the other thing is they want them to come away having some skills on how to work a variety of materials. So we get the process of uh, construction, casting, carving, 
so they have actually skills they can use in the future um, towards art or any other degree that they, any other way they choose to go um, with their futures, you know, so they have woodworking skills, they can use power tool equipment, they can, they can make something, um, they can carve plaster, they can construct with plaster, they know how to model clay, they, they have hand building techniques, how the firing process goes, um, they know how to cast concrete and in a lot of cases sometimes cast metal, um, we've done metal casting in the past as well. So basically I want them to come away with discovering the depth of creativity inside them and with you know, skills as far as how to work and manipulate materials. And if they decide to pursue a career in the arts, you know, they have the skills relevant to the discipline of sculpture. Um, but many who are not going into you know, art-related careers, what, I, what they come away with um, are new ways to think about challenges and problems and ways of approaching things that they probably haven't considered before. <clears throat> this is an opening up process. <clears throat> you start to look at things three-dimensionally um, and problem solving and taking on challenges and thinking about things sort of outside the box to be. <clears throat> um, so the conceptual, conceptually they can take these things away into different careers, problem solving and, and facing challenges and finding unique solutions and being creative about other aspects of their life is one thing. Then being able to use <clears throat> to use equipment and materials in interesting ways, they have actual skills they can use for, you know, who knows? They can work on cars. They, you can work you can work on your house. Um, I mean, you can take these sort of materials and apply them to just about anything, pretty much. <clears throat>